it's Monday, so you know what it is, what it do, what it is. It's your boy, The Grizz, and welcome back to Yesterday Today. And I want to talk to you about three quick things. One pretty good sale that you might want to jump on quick before it's too late. And got some big news on Microsoft and Bethesda. And of course, we're going to talk about that Nintendo Switch revision this March 8th, Yesterday Today. All right, lads and ladies, so let's go ahead and talk about that acquisition. So the acquisition has officially been finalized over in the EU. And uh, let's go on over to The Verge where they actually have a nice excerpt of everything and, and a breakdown of everything that there is to know. And it says the European Commission has approved Microsoft's $7.5 billion deal to acquire ZeniMax Media, the parent company of Doom and Fallout Studio Bethesda Softworks. Microsoft's deal has been approved by the EU without conditions as it does not raise serious doubts as to its compatibility with the common market. The acquisition required EU approval before Microsoft could finalize the Bethesda deal and bring future games to its Xbox Game Pass subscription. So that actually get, lets you know why they didn't just move everything over. So now, given the fact that this is actually finalized, you're going to just see stuff just rapidly coming over to Game Pass, making Game Pass that much more profitable. But then they go on to say, the commission concluded that the proposed acquisition would raise no competition concerns. Given the combined entity's limited mark position upstream in the presence of strong downstream competitors in the distribu distribution of video games. The transaction was examined under the normal merger review procedure. So with this actually being official, I definitely can't wait to see and hear about everything. I mean, look at all of this stuff. Now, everybody might not see the, the big deal. Some of them are like, maybe these aren't my games. But Fallout, Fallout is still a big deal. Fallout, uh, the new Vegas all of them and then even the latest one which definitely had its big one uh, big comeback and I would definitely like to see uh, Dishonored again even though I didn't finish any of them but I definitely thought those were really really great inventive single player experiences that we've experienced and this also means that they have access to Elder Scrolls just they can make that just exclusive on Xbox just like they got Final Fantasy 14 and I don't know if that's on Xbox I don't really I'm not too sure I'm not really in that community but I know it's big on PlayStation 5 and 4 so but just imagine a Pray. Maybe that Prey sequel that we were supposed to get that got canceled and stuff like that. Maybe just a, a lot of the other stuff. I just feel like all of these minds from all of these creative studios, especially with Doom, because I'm a huge, huge Doom fan, I can't wait to see the next Wolfenstein. We're just going to forget that, that Youngblood happened. Okay, Youngblood wasn't that big of a deal, but it did feel like Wolfenstein. I want some new Wolfenstein. Uh, everybody's waiting for Starfield. Starfield might be close. So I can't wait to see what's going down. What y'all think that this acquisition... Let me know down in the comments below, like, what y'all think of this acquisition finally coming? Do you think a bunch of stuff is going to happen? Maybe they're going to go into the old library and bring a lot of that to Game Pass. That's, that's really a chin scratcher right there. I'm really, really interested. But once again, let me know down in the comments below what you think about all this. All right, lads and ladies, so in just two days, we will it will officially be Mario Day, and we are having a Mario Day sale, and well, you know Nintendo, they never really put games on sale from the first party, just, you know, none of, none of their first party stuff, but when they do, it's it's not by much, but hey, 20 to $22 discount sounds pretty good, and there was an official breakdown by Nintendo Life, and well, Luigi's Mansion 3, which is at the top, because I highly recommend that game, is $38, $40 still, basically, and then you got Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020, that long, that name is mad long, $38.99, Mario Tennis Aces, $38.99, Super Mario Maker 2, $38.99, and Super Mario Party, $38.99. A lot of people aren't too happy about Super Mario Party. Not my preference, but what I have been seeing around is that they haven't added anything to it. So maybe there's going to be a new Super Mario Party on the Nintendo Switch. Maybe this, you know, this rumored Switch Pro will see uh, as that develops. But also, uh, honorable mention that, that Yoshi's Ep uh, Yoshi's uh, Woolly World and Yoshi's Epic Yarn, all of that good stuff is on sale as well. And for the same price, and you can get all of these physical, even if you don't just want it digital, you can get Yoshi, Yoshi's Woolly World. And that game was actually very fun. Very easy though, but it's very cute, very fun, and full of charm if you're a Mario fan, Yoshi fan, whatever. But all of these games are on sale up until March 13th, so you better jump on it really, really quickly. All right, lads and ladettes, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about that possible Switch revision, the Switch Pro, whatever it was, whatever you want to call it. But 
just know that the Switch has sold over 80 million. It already surpassed the 3DS. So the 3, 3DS was a monster. Everybody was like, I don't even use the 3D, but everybody was still buying it because it was Nintendo. But so a report came straight out from Bloomberg, and this is just straight up from a source that definitely doesn't want to be named, but a lot has been said. And I actually kind of want to go through this article with some of you guys, and it's just for it to say that it's going to have us it us be from Samsung basically and it says Samsung Co will start the mass production of 7 inch 720p resolution OLED panels soon as June so maybe we'll be able to see what this switch looks like uh, around that time and maybe we'll get it around Christmas time and it'll probably look really good around next year when it comes for fiscal sales around March because the switch has been out for, for four years the switch Lite has been out for two years just at that if you really look at it and here's uh, some more from some of the analysts and it says the release of more premium of a more premium version of Nintendo Switch's console with an OLED display and support for 4K graphics for the holiday of 2021 selling season could drive the company's sales about consensus for the fiscal year ending March 2022 and extending the life cycle of the Switch platform for many more years. And this is was said by Matthew Canterman and Nathan Naidu. And if I am mispronouncing that, I apologize. These are also now an analyst with Bloomberg. So, and everybody, you know, is just also wondering uh, what about exclusives and stuff like that. And it's been rumored as well that there will be some exclusives for the Switch Pro. But I don't think anybody has to worry because, well, we're going to complain all the time, but we're always going to go and buy a Nintendo product. We love Nintendo. If you like what they're putting out, you're going to still buy it even after you complain. I mean, this is literally the life that we live. It's wrestling fans, if you're watching something, you complain about it, but you're still going to watch it. And, of course, you're still going to buy Nintendo products even though they still don't go on sale, right? So, basically, if they get it and it runs native 4K and everything is fine, and also you're probably wondering... Why would it look better? Isn't the, the, the original Switch and the Switch Lite have L, um, 720p games? Yes, but they have LCD and the OLED. It shows light a lot differently and it actually looks a lot more crisper. Uh, very similar to the PS Vita where it had the original screen was uh, LCD and the new screen was an LED. And it looked a lot more crisper with the lighter PS Vita model. So, yes, they're doing it. But this is also going to probably have a bit of 7-inch display that's about two to three inches more than the original Nintendo Switch and well if they have exclusive games they can actually and I got this from RGT85 another YouTube and I thought this was actually a really good point say Metroid Prime Trilogy comes out of Metroid Prime 4 or even Breath of the Wild 2 right say those are exclusive to the Nintendo Switch Pro but you then give us the cloud versions of it on the Nintendo Switch OG model in the Nintendo Switch Lite and I'm really interested in seeing that a lot of people are going to complain but at least they can still play the game they go oh but I want to go outside and play well you better go ahead and get the Wi-Fi attached to wherever you are or you can just go ahead and get you a Switch Pro model so I'm also wondering if it's going to be a bigger screen with the rails on the side still fit the traditional Switch accessories I'm not even sure I'm really really interested Interested in seeing where this is going. All I know is I'm getting it day one. Ain't no games. I don't care if I have to run it into Target and grab the last one and create a smoke screen so nobody sees me leave with it. And I just run over to the register and buy it and try to get up out of there because we already know the craze. People still don't have PS5s and Xboxes. Absolutely insane. And that is actually a lot of similar to what happened to the Nintendo Switch when released. I was lucky enough to receive two, but I wasn't uh, scalping anything. I actually gave one to a friend. I don't play that scalping business. You've seen how I felt about that whole PlayStation 5 fiasco. But I'm really interested in seeing. I want to see the Switch Pro. I want to see these games. Why do these games just not being, we're not being told? I do believe COVID has probably stressed a lot of it. But I'm really hoping that we get to see in here, in play, the new Nintendo Switch Pro with some games later on this year. All right, lads and lads, that is it for today. This was the March 8th edition of Yesterday Today. And well, what are you thinking about this Switch revision? It's been rumored basically since the Switch came out. Okay, now that we are four years in the Switch, yep, maybe we are due for HD1. Everybody's worried about it falling behind the wayside. But remember, Nintendo toots their own horn. They, they walk to the beat of their own drum and all of that good stuff. They're always kind of right behind because, hey, everybody's ready for 4K. 4K TVs are really, really cheap now. I got one on Black Friday for about $200 easily accessible but 8k it ain't the big deal now but you know when everybody really starts getting into 8k it's funny Nintendo might just jump on and just imagine we're gonna be playing everything maybe 1080p 
and 8K kickout or 4K screens and 8K kickout. So I'm really, really interested in. Let me know what you think about Bethesda, the, the final acquisition, of really what you think is going to happen out of this. Hey, let me know down in them comments below if you happen to acquire anything from Mario Day. And if you do so, enjoy. But if you're new here, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell and scroll up to all so you know when your boy is posting. I post Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, bringing you some of the biggest gaming news you may have missed from yesterday, today, and Tuesday and Thursday from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Time, I stream, preferably a PS5 game right now. But for right now, this video is for Nita.